welcome back to You'll Go Wild. In this episode, we go gin tasting in Bundy. So we're at the uh, Bundaberg Scamp Camp. Oh, it's not called that, it's called something else. This is lovely. At the Scamp Camp, it costs $10 per night, which is an absolute bargain. The staff, or should I say volunteers, were very friendly, and your furry and feather friend pets can stay too. Yes, two people bought their pet birds with them. The campsite was beautiful. The grounds were well kept with native trees and flowers. The camp also backs onto the river, so you can go for a paddle if you have your own canoe. Bundaberg is really known for making rum, and as you drive into Bundy, either side of the main road was lined with sugarcane plants, swaying in the wind. Every now and then, there'd be break in the scenery, and cane would be replaced by macadamia nut trees. We're off today to do some gin tasting at the Kalki Moon Distillery. So noticed that we're having issues with our car, and so... The, uh, the Nissan's new, and so for this, for, for the car, we've had it uh, a couple of months? Something we've had like the car that. about three months, it and had 2,000 kilometers, oh no, it had uh, 3,000 kilometers on it, it's now got 5,000, so we've done 2,000 so far on this trip, and there's some sort of issue. not running smoothly issue. Um, but we're thinking that it might be fuel. So we picked up fuel yesterday, on our way through to uh, in Bundy um, to get some some supplies and stuff to go to the supermarket do we need some stuff and um, today we started up the car and it's just not running right so um, we're not absolutely sure I mean it's technically the car's still under warranty but if it's a fuel issue unfortunately that doesn't count and so somehow we need to find out what it is we've got to fix. So we might be in Bundy for a little bit longer than we anticipated, but it means that we can sort of tour the area a bit more and get to find out what really Bundy is all about. Because it's got to be more than just rum, I think. The car's booked in um, to Nissan tomorrow at 10.30. They were really helpful, but couldn't get it in today. The other issue is it's like the, all these things, it, it, no, it's just it, done it again. Um, there's no error lights or no warnings, um, but if it was a petrol car, it, it feels like it's misfiring. Yeah, um, which is why we think it's fuel, don't yeah. we? They, the guy at the, at the Nissan sort of thought it might be fuel or in, injectors, but it's anyway, it's going at 10.30 there, but we've got a fuel tank of diesel, so if it, it turns out to be dirty fuel, so I think they'll just change the fuel filter. Um, then, um, if it turns out to be dirty fuel, then we have to dump, I guess we'll have to dump the diesel that's in there, I don't know. And uh, at the moment, uh, diesel and petrol is at a high premium, so it's not going to be a cheap job. And unfortunately, because if it is dirty fuel, that doesn't count under warranty, unfortunately. No. So it's going to cost us, unfortunately. But that, you know, that's the way it is. It may have well helpful in there, but it's 150 bucks an hour. Um, is the engineer's cost and if it's just the fuel filter had I been at home I could have done that in 20 yeah. minutes uh, anyway it but is anyway, what it is we it can't is. continue to go anywhere that's vaguely off yeah so our, off our, the beaten track until we get it sorted out yeah so our plan is to go up to, towards Cape York so we need to make sure that the car is in tip-top condition this is why we decided to get rid of the Bajero um, and buy this because we want to go to Cape York and you don't want to go that remote with a car that you can't trust to get there because it's a long way to walk back you know it would be alrighty thanks for coming in so my name's Emma everyone I'll be running through the tour this afternoon we're going back in at March of 2017 um, so 25th of March 2017 we launched with gin and vodka um, now we didn't open our doors with just gin and vodka in production though so first thing we sold but behind the scenes we've also had our lovely 
lovely rug production on site as well. So uh, for us, since day one of production, we have been making our beautiful rum. Uh, the rum, as a side effect, does have one thing that it has to do before we can sell it as rum, which is ageing. So here in Australia, uh, illegally your rum, whiskey and brandy all have one law in common. They must sit on a timber vessel for a minimum two years before they can be called that product. So as a company, not very ideal to be having a rum production going on and no income. <laughs> so for us as distillers, and you'll see it quite often here in Australia and around the world, whenever you have an ageing product, um, those companies will also have an unaged spirit available as well. So we have our lovely gin and our beautiful vodka available for you to purchase. In the meantime, while we are waiting for our um, rum to age, but uh, for Kelsey Room, we actually opened up our doors with the intention of being known as a small batch rum distillery with a side of gin for the locals. Five and a half years later, though, here we are. Um, very well known for our gin production as a side effect of that. So um, when we first opened up the doors, we were much smaller in size than what you see here. We essentially started with our two little original stills that you see up behind us on the bar. Um, so for those, we have our little axe still, which is a 100 litre size pot still. So that's one with the little copper pipe on top of it. And we also then have our rum still, which is a 200 litre size pot still, which has the um, copper internally, not externally for that one. So copper in the industry next time is because it is a cleaner profile out the other end. So the more copper, the better the products are coming out, basically. So what about the base of vodka? Oh, it could be rice or wheat or anything. We hear a lot of different things from when it comes to vodka. Um, so you wouldn't be wrong in guessing all those different varieties of things because it is talked about quite a lot in the industry. Um, now when it comes to vodka, 2% of the world's vodka is made from potato. It's very, very little amount that's made today. So, yeah, not a lot. <laughs> um, so it's just a bit of a Russian stereotype more than anything now. Um, so 2% of the world make their vodka from potato. The rest of the world are usually either using wheat, grapes or sugar as the base. And then that is also the same base that makes gin. Now what that is, is ethanol. Um, you do have to be licensed to purchase ethanol, so you know, home distillers don't have access to this. They are have to be fully licensed and registered with the government to be able to purchase it. Not anyone just down the road can go and buy ethanol. Uh, we purchase it in from a Manilta group, which is down in Nara in New South Wales. Now Manilta group are one of three super distilleries in Australia producing ethanol. So we don't only have Manila Drop, but there's also an ethanol company up in the far north Queensland that do a sugar-based ethanol, or there's one down in South Australia that does a grape-based ethanol. So those are we're taking our botanicals. Now one of those is juniper berries, and the rest of them are all up to us. So every single gin out there on the market will have different botanicals through them, but the key one is juniper. So what we'll do, we grab our juniper plus our other botanicals, it'll go into the pot of the gin still, so into that little teapot section basically. We then turn it on, get everything heated up. Before that though, we will do what's called a maceration, which is a part of the London dry technique, so it'll soak at room temperature for 24 to 48 hours. Once that's all done though, we will turn it on, get it heated. It's not going to boil though, it will just get heated to a degree to produce vapour. So it'll really be nice and warm. Once that starts to kick through, the vapour will carry up the column of the still, carry across, and then recondense back into liquid out the other end. So all those botanicals that are in that pot throughout their maceration and their distillation, they're all there, they're rehydrating, so they do go in dry predominantly for us, um, but it's up to the distillery for what they'll do. Some may use fresh, some may use dry botanicals. Uh, they'll just rehydrate both in the still. And the oils, all that flavour will get released through that vapour. And then once that vapour recondenses back into liquid, it's taking that flavour with it and it's recondensed back into liquid form, we can legally call it gin. So we are at uh, Carty Moon, which is a distillery in Bundaberg. So as part of the um, tour, you get to try to taste it. So we have two each. We, we decided to have all different types because then we can taste them. So we've got um, a vodka, um, 
the Navy Strength Gin, which is nice and strong. My favorite one. Uh, and we've got uh, the Premium premium Gin, that one there. And we've got Plant Cane, which is uh, white rum, but they're not allowed to call it white rum in Australia because of some 1907 law. I'm not sure the plant cane is something that I would buy again. Which one's that? It's the premium. That's the premium gin. I think that's the, I think that's the tastiest. So, I'd say I tastiest. Like the, I like the navy strength. It's got a stronger flavour. Mm, it does. Anyway, we highly recommend it for a couple of hours. Can't get food here apart from the chips. But, um, it's a shame actually, that's something they really should think about actually, is having, um, even if it's just like a small sport or something, and then they can. And then they, a part of that is you can have a selection of gin. When we went to go out yesterday, we noticed the car wasn't running properly, so Andy is off to the Nissan garage to get it checked over. was when I put, filled the car up with diesel the day before yesterday um, I inadvertently filled it up with petrol mm. and then what happened is it ran rough but still ran yeah we were quite impressed that it still carried on driving and yeah. then I went to because the car's new I went to the Nissan garage and they diagnosed the issue quite quickly uh, well after I waited for uh, ages and then when they started looking they diagnosed it quickly and about four hours later and six hundred dollars oh, plus another tank of diesel another tank of diesel yeah because we already um, spent it's now over. fixed and um i've only got diesel cars so i was a bit confused as to how i would do that i mean you know i may just make a mistake um went back to look at the pump um and um in it certainly in the service stations near us at home all the diesels got black handles mm, in new south wales that's it isn't yeah it? or the, well, the ones that we use anyway they've all got black handles um this had a dark blue handle that looked black because it was all stained which was the 95 and the diesel was a bright orangey yellow um, but it was clearly marked above it so i you know just might just an error mm. never mind i like wasting money though so it's all good and it got made you sit around for, I oh don't know, you were in there six hours, weren't you? Yeah, to be fair though, in the I, to be fair to um, um, Nissan at Bundaberg, they were really helpful. Um, they might have laughed at the back, but they didn't laugh in my face. Um, and they kept me informed as to where they were with the car. Um, there was free Wi Fi. They let me plug my laptop into the power. Um, there was coffee and tea. So, yeah. oh, you're in heaven then. Yeah, it wasn't. It, whilst in hell. And they did run a complimentary bus down to the shopping centre. I walked, but you could have got the complimentary bus. Oh, really? Mm. So, um, anyway, lesson learnt, I guess. <laughs> anyway. That's part of the adventure, isn't it? Apparently. <laughs> I wouldn't have put it on film, but apparently it now is, yeah. <laughs> We move on to Middle Rock Campground in the Deepwater National Park. We love camping in remote free sites, but this one was a bit more of a challenge than we had anticipated. Within a few minutes of driving on the sand, we realised that this could be a mistake with the triangle. the air down the bottom. Oh, 
Ooh. We're very low. We're very low at the back. But it wasn't long before we had another challenge. This time it was a big drop off. It doesn't look that big in the video, but you're going to have to trust me, it was a sizable drop. With 
With sand much firmer, the journey is easier now to the campsite. Alright, so this is the camping spot. How beautiful is this? It's a big, huge spot actually. Lots of visitors come down and visit. And we get a nice table. And over here you get a campfire. And all this space is yours, which is not you know, not usual when you get a camp spot. You don't normally get this much space. Can't hear the road. You get the birds though. It's just a five minute walk to the beach, but boy, it was windy. Mm, it's not flat like the other one. It's still pretty though. beach to ourselves. Oh, it's a turtle protection zone so we might see turtles. I've got a feeling they come up to lay their eggs this now but don't they, they don't hatch until late in the year. I like that. You can see dugongs out here and whales and dolphins and then there's obviously the turtles. But you're meant to be able to snorkel. I'm not sure you'll be able to snorkel on that, that's a bit too harsh for me. Next time on Your Go Wild, we head further north and Andy gets an unexpected snappy response when he tries fishing in croc infested waters. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and share.